So thing I want you to uh, notice is, and this is very important, this is Marines. This is about, this is wartime, okay? And uh, it's pretty amazing that Charlene came up to me and said, you know, she just looked up two days ago what apocalypse means and how it's broken up into two words. Now this is going to take me a little bit to unfold to you. It's going to be like, um, I know it's God. It's going to, um, but as it begins to be unveiled to you, man, it's amazing. So watch this. Y'all ready? Let's, let's watch this right here. I want to go to church. Wow. Man, boy, it ain't nothing like the rain, huh? Wow. Man, you guys, uh, catch the lights. Um, we are going to, man, we are going to get into uh, some stuff. <laughs> yes. Kid, oh, kids dismissed. I'm sorry. Thank you, baby. Kids dismissed. I want you to relax, don't worry about the rain. Man, this is uh Wow, kinda almost like wow. You talk about prophetic. You're gonna see how prophetic the rain is, okay? Um I wanna uh this is gonna take me a little bit to get started with you. Um you're gonna grab a a chair. I wanna uh I'm gonna read this to you real quick. And then we're going to get started. All right? So, uh, what's up, Ellie? Kate, how you doing, girl? I still got to make you eat. Golly. They just dismissed the kids. Oh, awesome. Get well soon. Wow. Thank you, Ellie. Kate. Uh, man. The days of Elijah, right? The Bible says, before the Lord returns, Elijah must come, all right? So, 
I want to just read this, this song, whoever wrote this song. I don't know who did, but I want to find out because it was definitely spirit-led. I'm going to show you how, I'm going to show you why, and I'm going to show you the secrets of the Jubilee. Okay? Which is absolutely amazing. So, it starts off, these are the days of Elijah declaring the word of the Lord. These are the days of your servant Moses. Righteousness being restored. Now, let me just tell you something about that right there. It was on Pentecost that Moses was at the mountain. Jubilee is every 50 years as a jubilee. 50 is the number of Pentecost. And we're going to see that Jesus came on a jubilee year. He's going to return on a jubilee year. And he's going to return on the day of Pentecost. And I'm going to prove it to you. Okay? Watch this. He says, And though these are days of great trials, so when Elijah comes, remember, when Elijah came, there was first thing sign of Elijah, he said to Ahab, the next three and a half years, there ain't going to be no rain. There was great famine. The famine was so sore that it got bad, really bad. Just let me say that to you. It says, um, and though these are days of great famine and darkness and sword. Wow. That's pointing to when the Lord returns. Right? Watch this. Um, we are the voice in the desert saying, prepare ye the way of the Lord. Now that, we are the voice in the desert. The one that cried out in the desert, the wilderness, was John preparing the way of the Lord because the year of Jubilee was about to come and happen. Now let me tell you this. The year of Jubilee, where all is set free, begins, and we're going to read it, on the 10th day of the Day of Atonement. Rosh Hashanah, Yom Kippur, Yom Kippur, Blowing of the shofars, the trumpet, the tenth day, Yom Kippur began the Jubilee year. You understand? September, October. That's where it would fall out. Jesus began his ministry. He was baptized on Yom Kippur, the tenth. Wow. Jubilee, the year of Jubilee, starts on the 10th with the blowing of the shofar, right? The voice of the archangel. There was a voice that came out of heaven, right? So there's a preparation that's happening here. He says, be, then, then they sing, Behold, he comes riding uh, on the clouds. Whoever wrote this song? Robin Mark. Robin Mark? Robin Mark, I don't know if he connected the dots between the first and second coming of the Lord, that when the Lord comes, it's going to be on a jubilee. But he wrote it in his song, Through the Spirit. Watch this. So, these are the days of Elijah declaring the word of the Lord. These are the days of our servant Moses. That was on Pentecost that that happened. Pentecost is 50. Jubilee is 50. You're going to see these repeating patterns. Um, and though these are days of great trials, that means we're going to go through th things, great trials, you know, uh, of famine, darkness, and sword. That's what Jesus said in Matthew chapter 24. Wars and earthquakes and famines and pestilences and all this. It's going to be, it's going to be clear to you in a little bit. Prepare ye the way of the Lord. Behold, he comes riding on the clouds, shining like the sun at the trumpet call. Wow. Wow. What trumpet are they talking about? The first trump and the last trump. You're going to see what that is. That happens at the beginning of a new year. A new time, a new season, a declaration, a jubilee. So lift your voice. It's the year of jubilee. Man, what is jubilee? All debts are paid. We're going to see that in a minute. What? 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 It's good stuff. 
Out of Zion's hill salvation comes. That's Christ. And these are the days of Ezekiel. Wow. Wow. Ezekiel 37 and 33. The watchman on a wall. These are the days of Ezekiel. The dry bones becoming, putting on flesh. Hallelujah. That was the year of Jubilee. That the bones received their flesh. He's connecting dots. I wonder if he knows what he's saying. Because you see... They understood. They know what Jubilee meant. They understood that all of these things is going to happen at that time, on that day. Now watch. It's crazy, amazing stuff. These are the days of your servant David rebuilding the temple of praise. What is happening right now in here? We're rebuilding, right? What did Jesus do when he died? After he died, he rose again. He said, go wait and tarry till you're being due with power because now the new temple was going to be rebuilt. And people. Wow. Pretty amazing stuff, huh? All Every time on Pentecost. Pentecost is 50. Every 50 years is a jubilee. Right? With... When you get into understanding, a man works six days and he rests on the seventh, right? Six days and we rest. A land, the land is worked six years, it's commanded to rest on the seventh, right? That's a Sabbath for man, a Sabbath for land. And then the great Sabbath, Jubilee, gives rest to man and land. Wow. Doesn't the earth groan? Yeah. Romans 8. When Paul was talking about this corruption putting on incorrupt, Jubilee. Wow. Let's keep reading. Paul, we're going to open some stuff up. Goodness. And these are the days of harvest. <laughs> Jubilee is harvest time. What is that saying? That God is going to have a great harvest. 50, the, the, uh, the 50th day was Pentecost, was the wheat harvest time. There was two harvests. The barley harvest, when Christ arose, with the first fruits of the resurrection, and then those that are, that are His at His coming, Pentecost. The wheat harvest, that's what he says. He sends his angels in Matthew 24 to gather his wheat into his barn. That was on Pentecost. God began the great in-gathering when Peter stood up and preached. 3,000 came in. Amen. What is that saying to you and me? It's saying that the Lord, when he returns, he's going to return on Pentecost, on a jubilee, and I'm going to prove it to you beyond the shadow of a doubt. Now let me tell you something. They're saying that 2017 is the year of Jubilee. Message is if, if this is the year of Jubilee, that means since Christ died, it's been about 2,000 years. Listen what I'm telling you. If they're saying, which they are saying, and declaring, especially with September 23rd and, uh, you know, the sun in the sky with the dragon and the 12 stars and the sun and the moon and the woman with all the planets lying up with Virgo the Virgin and Leo the Lion, all that's happening September 23rd, this year, 2017. If this is the year, if this really is a ju jubilee year, that means that Jesus is going to return in the next 10 to 14 days. Hallelujah. You take that to the bank. That's serious business. So where are you at? I'm going to show you in the next weeks and prove to you beyond the shadow of a doubt that Jesus, with his own mouth, is going to tell you and me when he's going to return on the day. 
Wow. Watch this. And these are the days of harvest. The fields are white in the world. And we are the laborers in your vineyard declaring the word of the Lord. Behold, he comes riding on a horse at the trumpet sound, right? Lift up your voice. It's the year of Jubilee. Wow. This song is telling you when he's coming back. But I can't take this song as inspired word. It's from the inspired word. And I wonder if Mark knew what he wrote because what he wrote was absolutely amazing. Just like the disciples in Jesus' day, when Jesus told them, my brother had hit you guys with this. Watch this. He had said to them, go wait after appearing 40 days till you be endued with power. They know what day that is. That's Pentecost. Ten days. He said, not many days from now. Go wait in the upper room till you be endued with power from on high. They knew because he was in the year of Jubilee. How do we know that? Are y'all ready? Father, you are absolutely mind-blowing. Your word is amazing. Holy Spirit, help me reveal how awesome you really are. Amen. The year of Jubilee. Let's look at it really quick. The year of Jubilee. Jubilee, every 50th year, was a, the year of Jubilee. Right? When you had 49 years of time, seven years of seven is 49. The 50th year, the beginning of the 50th year, all debts are free. All debts are canceled. All debts are paid. Land is restored back to the person that it originally was owned to. And if you was enslaved as a person, you were set free. Isn't it amazing? Notice that man and land is connected. Ooh. Man's sin, Pete had said a while back. Remember I said your sin directly affects the earth? Yeah. Remember Pete said, hey, remember when Adam sinned, it, the ground was cursed. It brought forth thorn and thistle. So, and the earth groans to see you and me, the sons of God, the creation, the creature groaning, the earth groaning to see the creation, which is us, to put on the new body. A new flesh. Yes. That's on Jubilee. Wow. I'm going to show you. Watch this. Number one, we're going to read in Leviticus chapter 25. Because right now God is getting his house in order. We don't have much time. And if this is the year of Jubilee, are you ready for the next 14 days? Pretty amazing, huh? Check yourself to see whether you're in the faith or not. Because it's serious business. Watch this. So, the year of Jubilee is always introduced with the blowing of a trumpet. We're going to read it, and, and that's what the Bible says. When the Lord comes, He comes with a great shout, with the voice, with the trumpet of God. What? What you said? That's what I said. <laughs> Watch. He said, watch this. A Jubilee is after 49 years... The 50th year, there's rest. Now watch this. Jesus came on a jubilee year. How do I know that? Because the Bible says. Let me show you how he says it. Watch this. Jesus, he comes three and a half years or three years prior to the jubilee. 42 months. Let me prove it to you and show you. Watch this. Luke chapter 4, Jesus says this. He comes and he says, Now watch. Now Jesus, in verse 14, Luke 4:14, 4, he says, I'm sorry, brother, I'm gonna try to stay where you can see me. 
in chapter 4, the beginning of chapter 4, you get the temptation of Christ. He's brought out in the wilderness, and now his ministry is going to begin. Verse 14. As soon as he comes out of the wilderness, right? This is actually going to be year 47. What does that mean? From the prior Jubilee year that they had had before Christ, after that Jubilee, 47 years has passed. Jesus steps into the scene on the 47th year. This is when his ministry begins. How do we know that? Well, because he had to. Because he is declaring the acceptable year of the Lord that is coming. When all debts are paid, that's what he did. When the captives are set free, that's what he did. That's right. He died on the year of Jubilee. We're going to find out what that's about because if you're able, you can redeem your brethren. That's what Jesus did. He paid the debt. He redeemed you and me from being slaves to sin. He went in and set the captives free and gave them new skins, new bodies. <laughs> Wow. That's right. We're going to see this. Watch what Jesus says. So how does that connect in the Old Covenant? Why is 47? How does 47 connect? Okay. Let's see. You think Jesus... Let's make a connection to show you that what I'm saying, he came in on a 47th year. Let's establish it in the Old Covenant so you know it's not a bunch of just baloney. Because it, the time is set for his first coming and his second coming. The ark, Jesus was raised up on the 17th. Right? Raised from the dead on the 17th. Noah's ark was lifted up on the 17th. Right? Here's the key with Noah's ark. Noah's ark was lifted up in the second month, the 17th day. The first month, Israel's time, Brother George had how many days? 30 days, right? The Hebrew months had 30 days. 30, 17, the second month, the 17th day, the ark is raised up. 30 and 17 is 47. Ooh, what did you say? <laughs> There's your number 47 one time. And we're going to get into it more. But there's patterns he's showing us. Watch this. So Christ comes in and he says to him. Watch what he says. And Jesus returned, and I'm reading in chapter 4, verse 14. And Jesus returned in the power of the Spirit. And the power of the Spirit, that's from, you know... When he receives the Holy Spirit. Wow. And the power of the Spirit into Galilee. And there he went out fame of him throughout all the region about. And he taught in their synagogues being glorified at all. Watch this. And it came, and he came to Nazareth where he had been brought up. And as his custom was, he went into the synagogue on a Sabbath day. Seven to read. Wow. He just come out of the wilderness 40 days. Mm -hmm. Go straight into the synagogue on 7. 47. Ooh, what did you say? You hear me? The seventh day. 40 days in the wilderness. Mm. Seventh day Sabbath. 47. Yeah. He's letting us know the year. They know what the year is. You see, it's not directly given unto us through the word because we don't know the customs. But if you knew the customs, you would know the year because when he stands up and he, and he says that, you know, today Isaiah 61 is being fulfilled in your hearing that it is the acceptable year of the Lord. 
They know what the acceptable year of the Lord is. It's Jubilee. That's right. And they're like, wait a minute. What are you saying? What? What? He's saying Isaiah is being fulfilled right now. It's kind of funny, though, that Elijah must come before the Lord comes, and Elijah's ministry was for three and a half years, 42 months, it didn't rain. Why was Jesus' ministry 42 months, three and a half years? You start getting these connections going back. Watch. He says, And he came to Nazareth as, it was, as he was brought up, as the custom was. He went to the synagogue on the Sabbath day and stood up to read. And he says, Then there was delivered unto him the book of the prophet Isaiah. And when he opened the book, he found the place where it was written. Now, it says here, here he found the place. It just so happened to be that that was the daily reading. It means that he found the place where he was going to start reading. Not that he went looking through the book. Because the book was opened up to the spot where the last rabbi left off reading. It's a scroll. That's exactly right. Beginning to the end. When he comes on the scene... The next verse that's to be read is Isaiah 61. So he comes up and he reads and he says, The Spirit of the Lord is upon me. Wait, when did the Spirit of the Lord come upon the people? Pentecost 50. Oh. <laughs> oh. Right? 50. Watch this. Because he hath anointed me to preach the gospel to the poor. He hath sent me to, uh, to heal the brokenhearted. To preach deliverance to the captives. Right? Recovering sight to the blind. To set at liberty freedom them that are bruised. To preach the jubilee of the Lord. And, and you know what he does? And he closed the book. And he sat down. Now when you sit down in the Jewish custom after reading, it means you have something to say. So their eyes were fixed on him. We want to say something here. We stand up. Right? He read it and sat down. They're like, wait, what are you sitting down for? You have something else you want to say? So they fixed their eyes on him. And when he stand, and when he's, he's, uh, when they fixed their eyes on him, he's, he began to say, and he closed the book and he gave it again unto the minister and he sat down. And the eyes were all, and all their eyes were on him. Were on him, uh, they were all fastened. Let me, let me go back. And he closed the book and gave it again to the minister and sat down. And the eyes of all them that were in the synagogue were fastened on him. And he began to say unto them, This day the scripture is fulfilled in your ears. Amen. Watch this. Elijah is there. What do you mean? Before Jesus comes, Elijah must come. John the Baptist right. is pro proclaiming, the way of, proclaiming the way of the Lord. This is the Jubilee year that's coming. But his ministry has to be three and a half years. The Jubilee was three years away. Jesus began his ministry on the day of Jubilee that, would, that the Jubilee would start, which is Yom Kippur on the 10th day, is when he was baptized in the Jordan by John, led into the wilderness 40 days, comes straight in on the 7th day, 47, he goes and says, he's letting them know, not only is this the 47th day of his ministry starting from when he's baptized, but it's the 47th year three more years to Jubilee. 
that he has to follow through. So he's proclaiming, number one, Elijah's there. That's John the Baptist. There's a famine in the land. No word. Oh, no word. It's shut up. It's dry. Jesus comes out. He starts giving the word. Coming out. Watch this. He says, And all bear him witness and wondered at his gracious words, which proceeded out of his mouth. And they said, Is this not Joseph's son? Wait a minute. You're saying you're the Messiah. That's what he said. Because the Messiah is going to bring Jubilee. Is not this Joseph's son? You're saying you're the Messiah. You're going to give us freedom the year of Jubilee. Well, where's Elijah? He ain't here. And they wanted to kill him. Watch what he says next. And all bear witness by his gracious words which proceeded out of his mouth. And they said, Is not this Joseph's son? So now you know why they said that. They make a connection with just Joseph, right? And let me let you know something. Joseph was dead. His mother was a widow. But Mary was a widow. Watch. We're going to make some serious connections now. Watch this. Isn't that this Joseph's son? And verse 23, 423. And he said unto them, You will surely say unto me this proverb, Physician, heal thyself. Woe. Watch what just happened. He went from the beginning of his ministry to the end. Him on a cross. <laughs> Fifty. Wow. Ain't that what they said? Surely he healed others. He cannot heal himself. Jesus just took them to the year of Jubilee. Surely, physician, you know, surely you're going to say unto me, unto me physician, heal thyself. He has now given them the first clue of the Jubilee, of when it's all going to happen. When those that are held captive are going to be set free, that's in prison. When he's going to pay the debt with his blood. Wow. When the people are going to be redeemed. He's letting them know. Whew. Wow. He's going to pay the price. It's the, it's the 50th year of Jubilee that he receives his new body. What did you say? Yes, he died, went into the grave, and rose up in a new skin along with all the other ones that was walking around in Jerusalem, Matthew chapter 27. <laughs> Jubilee is the day of new skins. Wow. And I'm going to show it to you over and over and over again. He is so amazing. It's the day that we're redeemed and the land is redeemed. You see, we've been redeemed by the blood. Amen. And the earth is still yearning and groaning out for when it sees us put on our new body because it becomes a new earth. Yes. <laughs> You're going to read Romans 8 in a whole new light now, Bubba. Wow. Whoo, son! This is what Paul was talking about in 1 Corinthians and in Thessalonians and about the dead raising from Isaiah 26. Man! We know the day. You are not children of the darkness, so that that day, what day? That notable day. What day? The day of the Lord. The Jubilee. Wow. Watch. Here comes the keys to the secret, to unlocking what it is that Jesus is saying. 
the secret of the Jubilee. You ready? Watch what he says next. And he said unto them, You will surely say unto me this proverb, Physician, heal thyself. Whatsoever we have heard done in Capernaum, do also here in thy country. Well, he did heal himself. He arose from the dead in a new body. A new set of skin. Watch this. And he said, Man, take notice to what he is saying. Man. Because... This is all about what's going to happen on the Jubilee year. He says, Verily, verily, I say unto you, No prophet is accepted in his own country. But I tell you a truth. Verse 25. There were many widows. I think his mother will, his mother's a widow. Right. <laughs> what? Mary's a widow. Yeah. In fact, he gave on the cross, gave John. He said, John, behold thy mother. That's right. Because Joseph is dead. That's right. He's now, he's likened himself unto a prophet with widows, and he was there taking care of a widow in Nazareth. Where did he begin his ministry? At the widow's house, his mama. Ah! Where does Elijah go? To the widow. To the widow! Wow. There's no God like Jehovah. There's no God like Jehovah. Man, he's awesome. Yes, yes. <laughs> ah! It's amazing. Watch. And he said, Verily, verily, I say unto you that no prophet is accepted in his own country. His brothers didn't accept him. That's right. They rejected him. You could do a few miracles there. Watch this. But I tell you the truth. Many widows was in Israel in the days of Elijah. When the heavens were shut up three years and six months. When great famine was throughout the land. There was a great famine in Jesus' day. Three years and six months is his ministry time. What is he saying? For those who have ears, let them hear what the Spirit is saying. They should have connected the dots and went and did exactly what I did by the moving of the Spirit. The Spirit said, Joseph, me, Robbie, whatever you want to call me, Take notice to what Jesus is saying and go back to Elijah and read it very carefully because there are secrets that are hidden in there that Jesus wants to show you. <laughs> what are you saying? Wow! He made a connection to Elijah and he says... But I tell you the truth, many widows were in Israel in the days of Elijah when the heavens were shut up three and a half years, 42 months, when great famine was throughout the land. Before the day of the Lord comes, the great tribulation, 42 months. What? You see the patterns begin to line up perfectly. No rain. But none of them was Elijah sent. Oh, man. Save unto Sarepta of the city of Sidon. Now, that city of Sidon is about, is north, it's the, it's the, the northern border of Israel. You got Tyre on the Mediterranean Sea, and then a little bit past Tyre is Sidon. So it was a coast, it was a fishery place, right, where he was at, where uh, this widow was at, where Elijah had went to. Now you see, 
you don't know what's going on prior to all of this though before Elijah goes to Sarepta to this widow we got to go back and look and see what was going on with Elijah before he gets to this place that Jesus is mentioning so we have an understanding of what he's trying to show us Wow because all of a sudden when we get to this place all you're gonna see is Jesus my God I can't wait to get there <laughs> man and he says he says uh, there was great famine through the land but unto none of them verse 26 that he uh, was Elijah set, sent save unto Sarepta the city of Sidon unto a woman that was a widow that's where Jesus was he was taking care of his mother why well he was the firstborn <laughs> oh man what did you say watch this and he says next clue next clue and there were many lepers that were in Israel in the time of Elisha well Elijah's name means Yahweh is God and his Elisha's name means Yahweh is salvation so we get in this picture that's being said if I could just say it like that Jesus is God <laughs> He's God. That's right. Yeah. Wow. Now Jesus makes a connection from Elijah to the one that Elijah. Jesus makes a connection from Elijah to Elisha whom Elijah cast his skin on. His skin. His mantle. And he clothed himself. He clothed himself in the mantle of Elijah and actually went and lived where he lived in Samaria in a place called Shechem between the shoulders of the cross <laughs> what did you say why did Elisha do it he called Elijah my father my father the horse and the chariots of fire you know why? Because Jesus said, I only do what I see my father do. Elisha only did what he saw his father do. And I'm only going to do what I see my father do. And I'm going to show you and tell you exactly when my father is coming back. Because he told me and he showed me beyond a shadow of a doubt. And you'll see it too. Because let me tell you something. Remember, the book that was in God's hand in the last book of the Bible, which is called the Apocalypse, which they gave the word revelation, which Apocalypse means the unveiling or revealing of Jesus Christ. God the Father took the book that was held in secret and gave it unto His Son, and His Son gave it unto John and opened it for you and me so now we can know. So what was held in secret is now being revealed. And guess what day that was that God gave John the book. Let's kind of add it up. Well, John wrote the book of Revelation between 95, you know, up in around you know 90 they don't know the exact time I do <laughs> it's really easy I know exactly when he wrote it because the unveiling of the revealing of Jesus Christ in his coming is on the Jubilee so what does that mean that means exactly 50 years after Jesus rose from the dead God on a jubilee and I'm gonna prove it to you 
gave John the book of the revelation of his coming. Isn't it kind of funny? It's about 50 years later, but they don't know exactly between, they say 90, and but they're not really sure. And some of them even say that it was written way before. Well, I'm going to tell you, if Jesus died April the 3rd, 33 A.D., and he rose again, well then, A.D. 33, John, when he was on the island of Patmos, that would have been, he received the word of the Lord at 50 to 33. A.D. 83, he received it. I'm going to prove it to you. Because the scholars guess. And let me just show you how the scholars are wrong. So you'll know what I'm talking about. They say that 2 Peter, that 1 Peter was written around 65 A.D. About 30 years after, G, after Peter had preached to the 3,000 and they were saved. You could go to your commentary in 1 Peter and read it in 1 Peter in the commentary. The commentary is not the inspired word of God. And it says in your commentary that Peter wrote that between 60 and 65. Now it doesn't make any sense to me that Peter's first letter, and he writes it while he's in Babylon, would write to new converts some 30 years later. Because that's how the letter starts out. You can read it in chapter 2. He writes to the new converts. Do you write to new converts 30 years later? I don't think so. So the commentaries, they're guessing. But when you follow the word, the word will show you. Right? When the Lord returns, He returns to redeem the people. The Lord coming back. Watch. The book of Revelation talks about the Lord's coming and our gathering together unto Him and judgment. You're going to see on the day of Pentecost, on the year of Jubilee, the day of Pentecost, follows judgment every time. Watch this. Let's keep reading. So here's the next clue. Wow. I ain't even got started. We are in uh, chapter 4, verse 27. Luke 4. He says, And there were many lepers that were in Israel in the time of Elisha, the prophet. And none of them were cleansed, save in Naaman the Syrian. Oh, my Lord. Oh, my God. Man. When we get into this, Syrian... Syria. Remember I told you about 47? Remember I told you about 47? Syria. You know, if you look up Syria, you know what Syria breaks down to? It's Armenia. The Armenians. That's where Noah's Ark rested. The mountains of Armenia. And I'm going to have to save that. But here's the two secrets that we're going to get into. We're going to get into Elijah and Elisha. We're going to... Jesus made a direct quote telling you and me, showing you and me where we're to go to see exactly what's going to happen and what's going to go down. It's encrypted and hidden in Elijah and Elisha. When I tell you it is absolutely amazing, people, you're going to be blown out of the water. First thing, before we get into that, the year of Jubilee is introduced by the blowing of the trumpet. When we come back, when you guys leave, I want you to read Leviticus chapter 25. So when we come back, I don't have to get into it with you, okay? But I want you to read Leviticus chapter 25. This is what you're going to find out. The year of Jubilee. Number one, it's introduced by the blowing of the trumpet. That's when the Lord says... Great shout, voice of the archangel, and the trump of God. Right? It's after 49 years, the 50th year. We're going to find out how that lines up with Christ. He began his ministry. That was 47 years into the new, coming up to the new Jubilee year. And his last three and a half years is going to fulfill it. So 47, Yom Kippur to Yom Kippur. Then Yom Kippur to Yom Kippur, Yom Kippur to Yom Kippur, 
Remember, Yom Kippur is the Day of Atonement. His ministry is three and a half years, six more months, Passover. Bam. All debts are paid and canceled. And I got into showing you how the spring feast and the fall feast are one and the same. And we have to do it another time. Watch this. No, what happens on that time? Well, let's look. See if Jubilee lines up with Christ and what he did. Restores freedom to the captive. Was they held in captive in bondage, right? Yeah. Right? Why? Because the blood had to, he had to go and he had to pay the price with his blood and bring it to, you know, before the Father. They had to be redeemed. That's what this is all about, redemption. Number one, restore property to the original owner. If you had someone's property on the day of Jubilee, you got to restore that to them. If you paid for it, if you bought it, if you inherited it, if it was given to you, that is the year, that is a time that all debts are clean and you are set free. Totally, 100%. You, and that whole year you rest. Isn't that what Christ came to do, to give us rest? Yeah. He paid the debt of sin, set us free from the bondage. Physically, those that was held captive. Spiritually, we don't have to be a slave to sin. Amen. Does these times start lining up? Was it a jubilee year? When Moses set the captives free, when they came out of Israel, let me answer the question. Yes! It was a year of jubilee. But they didn't know it yet. Because the law hadn't been given. But God's prophetic time clock from the beginning was counting down. Counting down to the children of Israel being set free. That's why, watch, God is very specific to you and me when He says Moses was in Egypt 40 years, with Jethro 40 years, in wilderness 40 years, 120 total. Why? Every 2,000 years, there's 40 jubilees. 40, 40, and 40 is 120, and then we cross over. Joshua crosses us over. So by God giving us Moses' exact age, he's letting us know that when they walked out of Israel, when they walked out of Israel, watch this. They were set free from the blood, by the blood, on the 14th. But guess what? Watch. When they left and they went to the Red Sea, and there was a, the, the, the water gate was closed. God opened the water gate and they went across. And on the 17th day that they was coming up out of the sea, remember, it was all about Pharaoh wanting his slaves back. <laughs> well, guess what? God says, they nobody owns you, and kaboom, God crushes them in the Red Sea. No one owns you now. You're free. You belong to me. Hallelujah. That was the year of Jubilee. Wow. We can go back and count the Jubilees. I wonder where there were 40 years in the wilderness. Ah. They crossed over on the 40th year, which is symbolic, 40 jubilees. They crossed over on the 40th year. But watch this. That wasn't jubilee yet. Because there were 40 years in the wilderness. I wonder where they was at 10 years later in the promised land. <laughs> I wonder where they was at. Here, check this out. Man, you talk about open some stuff. Um, it's the year that debt is paid in full. That's what happened. Debt was paid in full. Resto it's the year they restore rest to the land. Wow. Man, when sins are paid for, when our debt has been paid, man, can't you rest? When you owe somebody something. Yeah. Wow. There ain't no rest. Right? It's figurative of Christ. How do we know that? He said, I'm the Jubilee. But he said it. Christ's mission. Isaiah 61, verse 1 through 3. It says, For man, it's for man, 
it's fulfilled at his death. How do we know that? Because he set the captives free. Watch this. Pay the debt. And number two, Christ's mission. The earth's jubilee. That hasn't happened yet. That's coming when he returns. And we're going to get into Romans chapter 8. How the earth groans for us to put on our new bodies. Because that's when it is redeemed. A new heaven. A new earth. Right? Now, I want to show you something. Marie, one more thing to you. Now, when Christ read in Luke chapter 4, watch what he does. And I'm done. I'm going to end it right after this. I know I say that a lot, but I am. Look what he says. He stands up and he reads from Isaiah 61 and he says this. He says, um, the Spirit, of, verse 18, 418, The Spirit of the Lord is upon me because He hath anointed me to preach the gospel to the poor, and He hath sent me to heal the brokenhearted, to preach deliverance to the captives, and recovering sight to the blind, to set at liberty them that are bruised. To preach, He's going to preach about the acceptable year of the Lord that's coming the Jubilee. It's not yet. It ain't for another 42 months when people are redeemed. Wow. Right? And he closes the book. He closes it. Let's go see where he was reading from real quick. Watch this. Isaiah 61. Because what he is proclaiming is coming on that day is some other things behind it. Watch. He's quoting directly from Isaiah 61, and it says, and he says, he, so he opened the book, and he says, the Spirit of the Lord is upon me. And I told you guys already, it's pretty amazing that the Spirit came on the day of Pentecost, which is 50, and Jubilee is 50 years. Right? The 50, 50, 50, you're going to see. It's always the same, never changing. Watch what he says. The Spirit of the Lord is upon me, because he hath anointed me to preach the good tidings unto the meek. He hath sent me to bind up the brokenhearted. To bind them up. Wow. Bind. That's Hosea 6, too. I'm going to get into that later. To proclaim liberty to the captives. That's what he did. The opening of the prison to them that are bound. That's what he did. All of this is done on Jubilee. That's why he did it three and a half years later from him pronouncing this. So the last 42 months of the Great Tribulation, you find that there's a gathering and a judgment. Jesus, when he died and rose again, took the Feast of first fruits with him to heaven. Watch the progression. Watch this. Next, he says, to, verse 2, to proclaim the acceptable year of the Lord, and he closed the book. But in Isaiah 61, there's a comma there. And the day of vengeance of our God to comfort all those who mourn. That means God is going to return on Jubilee. What? To gather together His elect from the four winds of the earth. Isn't it crazy? Is that not enough for you? Let me take it further. Acts 2. Watch this. Acts chapter 2. Peter is making a connection to the Jubilee. He takes, Peter takes you and me to Joel 2. Look what Peter says. Peter is saying, it's the day of Jubilee. It's the day of ingathering. It's the day of being set free. It's the day of all debts of being paid. That's the gospel. You're free. That's right. From sin and bondage. That's right. You don't have to be a slave to sin anymore. 
He's coming back for us. Just walk in your freedom. Trust and believe. Have faith that you're set free. Look what Peter says. He says, But this is that which was spoken of by the prophet Joel. Jubilee. Watch. And it shall come to pass in the last days, saith God, I will pour my spirit upon all flesh. That was 50. Watch. And your sons and your daughters will prophesy. That would mean proclaim freedom to the captive. Wow. Through Jesus Christ, your sins are forgiven. The debt that you owe, the sins that you've committed. Man, I was an adulteress and a fornicator and, a, and did drugs and all of these things. But Jesus paid me, paid for that. Amen. I was a drunkard, a smoker, a liar. The opposite of faithful is unfaithful. Not only was I unfaithful to my wife, I was unfaithful to my God. But he said to me, I paid for that for you. It's gone. Now I live free. You can't hold that in front of my face. That's right. Because it ain't not covered with the, with the blood of animals and goats. It's been washed away. Amen. I'm a new man. Amen. I'm a new man. It's done and over with. The only one that owns me is Jesus Christ. Amen. Look what he says. This is what's being declared. He said, and I'll pour, uh, verse 18, and on my servants and on my handmaids I'll pour out in those days of my spirit. And they shall prophesy. That means they'll preach the good news of what I've done for them, Jesus said. Peter is saying, this is what was done. This is what Joel was talking about would happen on the day of Pentecost. Men and brethren, this is what Jubilee is really all about. It's about Jesus. Hallelujah. We, we have been keeping these feasts and these festivals, but it's all about Him. Yeah. That's why you saw people walking around Jerusalem when Jesus arose from the dead with the great sound of an earthquake and the sound and ripped, you know, the mountain. And the dead got up and were walking around. Isaiah 26. That's the acceptable year of the Lord. It was a year of Jubilee. He's the same yesterday, today, and forever. He's coming back on the Jubilee. Ah! And in that coming back, there's a great harvest of the wheat. And when he harvests the wheat out, what happens next? Watch. And I will show wonders in heaven above and signs in the earth beneath. Fire. Wait, that's the day of Pentecost. <laughs> Fire come down. Amen. Fire. And vapors of smoke. The sun shall be turned into darkness and the moon blood red. Before the great and notable day that the Lord returns. Peter said, and I quote, listen. Yeah, it says before. Peter is directly quoting from Joel. And he's saying what Joel said is now being fulfilled today. But guess what? We didn't see the blood, the fire, and the vapors of smoke. We didn't see the sun turn black as sackcloth and the moon blood red on the great notable day. What is the notable day? Ah. <laughs> Watch this. Revelations. I, John, was in the spirit on the Lord's day. Ah. <laughs> Did you hear me? Amen. On Pentecost, 50 Jubilee is when he was taken up to heaven. Ooh, what did you say? My God, Jesus is about to come. He could come if they have messed with the time, any kind of way, shape, or form. If it really is the Jubilee year, 2017, that means around June 4th or so, the heavens can rip open. 
Are you ready? Really? Have you accepted Jesus? Are you testing yourself to see whether you're really in the faith? Because the debt's been paid. And what are you really living for? Are you living to declare who He is and what He's done? Or are you living for yourself? Are you looking for Him? Because the Bible says that He's coming back for those that are looking for Him. When? On the great notable day. You see, all in Israel knew. He rebuked them for not seeing the signs of the times. Wow! Brothers and sisters, I hope you're ready. Because if you're not, he's going to come like a thief to you. And little did we know it until today that literally and physically Jesus could return. And when he returns, it's not going to be on any day. It's going to be on the notable day. And we come back next week. And there ain't no way that I could stop and wait a whole week to separate this message in two weeks before I preach again. Because we need it. That's why God right now has spoken to this house and this body to get our house and our church in order. It's amazing, huh? Next week, I'll be ministering. There won't be no food. Because we need a follow-up. We're going to feed, but it ain't going to be on physical food next week. It's going to be on spiritual food. That's what we really need. Not the bread that sustains the flesh. Amen. But the bread from heaven. Right. So now you see what's connected on the day of Jubilee. You go back to Joel, he connects the year of Jubilee, not only with the debt being paid in full, but also the return of the Lord, when the sun shall turn black as sackcloth and the moon blood red. Why before the great and notable day? Well, it's simple. Because three and a half years prior to his coming, there's going to be great tribulation. And let me tell you something that God had prepared a place for Elijah to go who was filled with the Spirit. And guess what? He'll prepare a place for you and me. And he commanded the ravens to feed him. He went by the brook Chernith, Cherith, Horith. He commanded an unclean animal, bird, to feed him. Wow. Guess what? We're the same. If we're going to be here, unclean animals represented the Gentiles. God will cause the unclean to feed you and me, his prophets. What are we? His prophets. We're all his prophets. Declaring the word of the Lord. Behold, he comes riding on the clouds at the trumpet sound. Right? Lift up your voice. It's the year of Jubilee. Out of Zion's hill, salvation comes. Our salvation is Yeshua. Yeah. Man, Father, thank you, Lord, for your word. Thank you for your time, Lord. Thank you, Father, that... Man, thank you for using my brother to call me up to ask me a question about Jubilee. Thank you, Father. Yeah. Thank you for showing us, Lord. Thank you for letting us know that we're children of the light and not children of the darkness. One last thing. Man, if you're not right with Jesus Christ, man, now is the time. Begin to check yourself. Get right. Try to get yourself lined up according to His Word. If you haven't received Jesus Christ, ask Him to come into your heart. Ask Him to forgive you of your sins. Ask Him to pay your debt. Ask Him to pay your debt. And serve Him with everything in you. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen and amen. Yes.
Listen to this. Listen to this. No, hey, you got. You listen to this right here. This morning in uh, Bible study, I shared with the people that were there that the word apocalypse for me has always represented, you know, the wars and the horror and the four horsemen and the destruction and, you know, all that kind of stuff. And I looked it up and it comes from a Greek word, uh, a two Greek words, excuse me, apo, A-P-O, and then calypsis. And it literally means, apo means the removal of, and the word calypsis means the veil. So when he comes back, the veil of the bride is removed and you're face to face with him. So you're no longer, uh, you're not hidden from him, he's not hidden from you. It's his marriage. Apocalypse means marriage. Hallelujah. Whoa. <laughs> and let me tell you something about what she just said. Check this out. To tie it in for you. When Jesus arose from the dead, there was no more veil. No veil. That's right. The veil was right in the temple. When he, um, when Jesus died, the veil was right in the temple, making a way to come to the Father. But they also, remember, he was veiled in the flesh. It's, the, it's, it's about removing the veil. So remember, when he died, his flesh was ripped off of him. And when he arose on that jubilee, they could see what he really looked like face to face. So apocalypse, right. It's not only a wedding, an unveiling, a revealing. It's a marriage. It's a gathering together. It's a wow. Right? So now you know the day. Wow.